Joining me now is Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, who represents the state of Illinois. He's a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and he served in the Air Force in both Iraq and Afghanistan and is still a pilot in the Air National Guard. Congressman, it's great to see you. Thanks for taking some time today. You too, Casey. Thanks. Let's Good start up. with North Korea. Do you think that this launch was a direct response to the sanctions that were leveled against North Korea on Monday? It's hard to tell without actually asking Kim Jong-un. I mean, I, we expected launches anyway prior to these U.N. sanctions. And I think what's obvious here is he's going to continue a dangerous game. And that game is not just developing an operable nuclear fleet, which is something that's important to note, obviously. But beyond that, he's willing to flex muscle and frankly, fly a missile over an ally of the United States. What would happen had that missile failed mid-flight and landed in Japanese territory? What happens if he shoots a missile towards Guam? This is a very dangerous, intense situation and a very dangerous, intense man. And so I think these U.N. sanctions are good. It's a good start or I guess a good uh, escalation. But at the end of the day, we have to pray and hope and do everything we can to make sure this economic stick works. Otherwise, I fear the only option is the military. Congressman, what is your level of confidence in the president's ability to handle the tension in this situation? I've talked to a lot of your colleagues and to leadership aides, and even among Republicans, there's been a lot of nervousness about uh, the bellicose language, tweeting. But it seems as though as this has escalated, there seems to be a sense that the U.S. government as a whole, led by, the Trump, by, by President Trump, has, has gotten a little bit calmer and more capable. Do you agree with that, or do you still have concerns about the president's willingness to kind of fire off tweets at will when it comes to this kind of a potential nuclear crisis? Well, when it comes to, you know, typically on international policy and Twitter, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, but that said, uh, we've tried this idea of walk softly, carry a big stick for 20 years when it comes to North Korea. And if, walk, if, if speaking softly, I'm sorry, if that doesn't work, ultimately the answer is a stick. So I think escalating the rhetoric a little bit to make it clear that there is a military option. Military options, and in many cases using language to make that clear, is what makes diplomacy effective against an adversary. There are two instruments of power working in conjunction with each other. So I don't have a problem, frankly, with some of the president's rhetoric on this because I think he's making it clear to Kim Jong-un and frankly probably his chief audience is China and Russia that this is very serious, and we're taking this seriously, and the last thing we want to do, but we're willing to to defend our own people and to defend our homeland, is to use the military option. So speaking of Twitter, uh, I do want to ask you about the terror incident in London that happened earlier today. The president's tweet this morning, he said, these are sick and demented people who are in the sights of Scotland Yard. And that set off a lot of anger among British officials, including the prime minister, Theresa May. She said it wasn't helpful. Take a look, and then we'll talk about it. Prime Minister Donald Trump has intervened to say that this was carried out by people who Scotland Yard had in its sights. Does he know something we don't? Yeah. Well, I never think it's helpful for anybody to speculate on what is an ongoing investigation. As I've just said, the police and security services are working to discover the full circumstances of this cowardly attack and to identify all those responsible. And in the White House briefing, they just tried to clean this up a little bit when they were asked if the president uh, should have done something differently here. Do you think that he should have uh, approached this this way? No, I, it's, it's what I was referring to when I said, you know, the, the Twitter issue. I, I think that's the perfect time to tweet that, you know, the thoughts and prayers and, frankly, the, resource of the resources of the United States of America stand with the people of the U.K., uh, I think to cast blame early on is absolutely the wrong way to go. Uh, but that said, when he called them losers and, and uh, you know, sick individuals, these ISIS members are terrorists, I fully agree with that. And I think what's important now is for the Western world, the U.K., the United States, and frankly, all freedom-loving people to make it clear that this won't stand. And when you liberate territory from ISIS, you run counter the narrative of ISIS that they're, in fact, this prophesized caliphate because prophesized caliphates aren't supposed to get defeated in combat, which they are right now. So I think he's missing an opportunity to make it clear that we all stand together with our friends Friends, we're making progress against these terrorist groups, and frankly, this is of our generation. It's going to last probably as long as I'm alive to some level, and uh, it's unfortunate, but it's a reality I think we have to accept. Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, thanks so much for taking the time to